Hey guys, so today we're gonna do a cord cutting ritual. Now, this is for sure the easiest one I've ever produced for YouTube. Um, it takes under 15 minutes to perform it. It will take me probably less than five to explain it. That being said, there are a few considerations I like to go over that you should think about before you decide to do this and when you should do it. So let's get into it. All right, cord cutting. So. Basically the concept is that when you cut cords with, typically it's a person, and I'm gonna speak about this as if it's a person the entire time. That being said, it does not have to be a person. I think the other really practical use for this would be to cut your energetic ties to a project that you've been pouring energy into that isn't getting you anywhere, so that you can redirect that energy into something else. That also makes a lot of sense to me. However, that's probably gonna be the least common use of this so i'm just going to address the most common situation which is going to be a person now if you want to cut your energetic ties with the person um a lot i hate making generalizations like this <laughs> Ugh. but um for the record i don't consider myself um uh, like a witch i know that's probably shocking <laughs> considering my channel content but I don't use that label. I started in paganism. That was my practice you know, years and years and years and years, years ago. Um, and it's still obviously a part of what I do, but I don't really follow those traditions necessarily. And that being said, a lot of traditional practitioners and a lot of witches and witchcraft practitioners who charge money for spell work will totally tell you that you can just do this ritual or they could because they're so powerful and it would sever the tie. Um, I disagree, okay? And I'll tell you why. Your emotions, <laughs> we have a tendency to separate our emotions from our spirit and from our mind and from our body. We're always in this weird idea that we have to like control them or handle them or blah, blah, blah. But your emotions are just a part of the layers that is your energetic essence, right? You have your mind, your body, your soul, your emotional body is a part of you. It is a it is, um, it notifies you, it, it informs you, it is relevant, um, very relevant to your life and what you're experiencing. Now, if you just go and you pour your energy angrily into cutting ties with somebody, where is that anger going? Because I can almost guarantee you that 90% of the time, if you do this ritual, it's not gonna dissipate. You're not gonna transmute that anger through this particular process because it hasn't worked its way into anything. If you really wanna sever ties, you're going to have to find peace with it first. You're gonna to have to work that anger or that hurt or that pain or that trauma, or the, whatever it is that makes you wanna cut ties. You're gonna to have to work it down into a place where you can actually comfortably deal with it and sit with it and then you can cut it, okay? And then it can just drift away easily. Now, what I'm gonna recommend is that if you are upset with somebody and you wanna cut cords, by all means, do the ritual, okay? You can say I'm wrong and you can just not believe me. Maybe I am wrong, okay? Maybe I am. It's not been my experience. Um, what I would recommend instead is that you go, a month ago, I posted a full moon forgiveness ritual. I don't know if forgiveness is one of those things people don't like to do, <laughs> but this is for you. This is for you to find peace with the situation or that person, right? And you go through that ritual. And once you can settle with it, then you can cut ties. You can literally, do, this is a very short, very simple ritual. You could literally tack it onto the end of that ritual. Or if you wanted to, you could perform the full moon forgiveness ritual. Um, and then wait a month and then do the cord cutting so that you had breathing time if you want to, that it feels right to you, like follow your instincts. I always say follow your instincts. These are my guidelines. This is, I'm telling you that this is what I think you should do. This is my opinion, but trust your instinct. If you feel like you can just do the cord cutting and that's all you need to do because of where you're at with the situation, maybe you're like, no, I am good with that, but I have to do this because whatever, whatever. Maybe you are really at peace and comfortable, but for some reason the other person won't disengage and that's why you wanna do it? Okay, cool, I get that, that makes sense. I'm just saying, if you are upset with somebody and you wanna do a cord cutting, it is going to be far more effective if you can work that emotion down the scale first. That's all I had to say about it. Make your choices. Now, let's do the ritual.
Okay, so first of all, I have been rearranging my house and moving bookshelves and furniture around and spring cleaning. And now my bookshelves are just piled with shit that I haven't organized yet, so please ignore the chaos that's happening here. It is currently 2.30 in the morning, and that is tomorrow's problem. <laughs> now, the basic concept of a cord cutting ritual is just like it sounds. It's a cord that you cut. Now, cutting is fine, but fire is far more powerful. And you know me, I like to burn things. <laughs> so, uh, I will actually use fire. I recommend using fire. Fire is transformative. It is um, a powerful element. So... What you want to do is if you have if it's a person and you have a picture of that person and you um you can i'm just using literally candle holders with a piece of yarn between them whatever you got works uh green is good for anything that has to do with your heart chakra so if it's love situation green's the way to go um you can tie it to whatever you want however you want to do it you can also if you go to like a specialty shop like a um they will oftentimes sell cord cutting candles kind of thing where there's two pillar candles, but the wicks are tied together. It's like when they do the beeswax uh, taper candles, they'll just leave the wick attached and then you can just burn the wick between the two candles and let them burn down. That's another option. Um, if you have a pitcher, use the pitcher on each side. Or if you don't, you can just write your name. Um, your name, I'm just gonna literally write your name and their name and this with any kind of ritual work or intention setting work or anything you always want to use intention right so i'd recommend that. so i'd recommend that you actually sit and spend a few minutes um kind of doing this in your head first do do a visualization. Imagine a cord. It can be a cord of light, a rope, whatever works for you in your visualization process. Um, and your emotions, because emotions are powerful. Um, visualize that cord and then feel that, what it feels like. And then actually in your mind, sever the cord. And then with your emotions, sever the emotion. After you do that, that's when you actually want to do the cord cutting or burning in this case. Um, and it's the key to it is always going to be the same. And that's going to be about your intentions, right? It's all about um, how much energy you pour into it and where you're at with it. Again, I think it really helps if you're at peace with it versus angry. I mean, anger has its purpose. So, I mean, if, if it works for you, if you maybe, maybe feel a lot of fire in your chart, you're like an Aries, Sagittarius, um, Leo in your chart, <laughs> lots and lots of it, rising and moon or whatever, maybe that will work for you. Maybe you just need aggressively to sever your emotions. I'm not here to tell you what's right and wrong. I'm just making my suggestions. I think it works better if you're at peace first. So regardless, it looks like my yarn is more plastic than I realized because it's kind of melting a little bit. And uh, once your cord has been cut, let's just help it out. Use fire safety, guys. You might want to have water on hand. I did not plan accordingly. Oh, that smells so terrible. I have a small fire. Don't do what I just did. Maybe get some water. Maybe plan accordingly. Whatever. Um, after you're done, you're going to want to dispose of all pieces of this. Um, you can literally throw it in the trash because on a deep psychological level, we all associate the trash with things that are unwanted and discarded. And in doing so, you are telling your subconscious mind that these are things that are discarded and unwanted. You can bury it if you prefer, but I honestly think just throwing your paper or the pictures and the yarn and the trash is adequate. Feel free to um, alter this ritual any way that makes you feel good, whatever works for you. I mean, there's, there's no rules, right? So if you're like, well, I want to burn the photo too. Cool. I'm pro burning things as a general baseline for ritual work. So, I mean, run it. 
like I said, it's a very, very short, very simple ritual. It's all about how much you put into it. You really want to spend the time doing the visualization and uh, working on your emotions first, and then you're done. Dunzos. Easy peasy. And sometimes the simplest magic is the best magic. If your ritual, if this ritual is not vibing with you, I have plenty of other rituals on my channel. Go feel free to check them out. I got a whole playlist. Go crazy. Don't forget to hit the like button um, or comment or subscribe. It's always really appreciated. It helps me and helps me grow the channel. And uh, if you're not following me on Instagram and Twitter, come hang out.